Don't make me get the belt. Battle belts, gun belts, training gear, apocalypse gear, whatever you want to call it, that is the topic we are talking about today. We actually received a question in our QA series about battle belts, gun belts, whatever. So that is what the inspiration is for this episode. Hi guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this episode. Please subscribe to our channel. You can check us out online, follow us on social media. And of course, if you have a question about anything guns or tactics related, you can send it to the email address shown below to be entered into our monthly QA series where we answer your questions. And that's again, what spawned this idea. So the whole thing of a belt can kind of be a complicated topic. Now, if you're looking for the padded style of belt, also, I got to give a shout out to Chris Tran. He's a fellow content creator here at Guns and Tactics. He did an article. I'll put a link to the webpage up here, and you can read his review of the High Speed Gear padded belt, which is a really, really nice system. And I like padded belts. However, for my taste, I've kind of gone to the simpler duty belt style of belts because I have a background in law enforcement, and this is more similar to my duty gear. So I kind of wanted to replicate that, and I like the the solidity. Solidity, is that a word? Anyways, I like the solid platform that it offers. So let's move all this off to the table first. And we'll begin with the holster. Now, don't think that you need to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on a battle rattle belt. You can just get a good quality belt that's rigid, that doesn't flex, and a belt mounted holster and a couple of mag pouches and you can be just fine to go training. So again, don't feel like you have to spend all of this money on that. But if you want to, that's obviously what we're here to learn about. So that aside, I like to use a two part belt system, which means I have a trouser belt and then I have the outer belt. And the trouser belt goes into the belt loops of your pants. And in this particular case, it has Velcro on the outside and that Velcro then matches up to the surface on the inside of the belt, kind of anchoring the two together. Now, a basic trouser belt, like this type shown here, is okay. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, they're not very rigid, and if you try to get them super tight, sometimes the Velcro wears out and can pull apart. This will get you started, and these are cheap. This is like 15 bucks. However, what I have grown to prefer is a more rigid shooter's style belt. This one happens to be a wilderness instructor belt, and I had them sew on the uh, Velcro, the soft, I believe this is the loop, is what they call that, on the outside of the belt to match the inside of my belts. Now, I use this one all the time. I use it at work. What I like is I can get this nice and tight and solid, and it's a good sturdy trouser belt. It keeps my waistline exactly where I want it. I can tighten it up, it holds tension, and then it obviously attaches my duty belt. So a good belt like this as your core system is a great idea. There's several competition style systems like this as well, but I've really grown to like this style. This belt will probably run you, depending on your size, I wanna say 70-ish dollars, but that's a good platform. Now what it does then, just like the other one, as you're wearing this and you put your belt on around it, it Velcros together so the two are kind of anchored and then when you take it off or on it is Velcro together. I'm pretty sure you guys get that, it makes sense. As far as the main belt itself, you know, I like the thicker law enforcement duty style belt. I have this particular one here is made by Bianchi and this uh, used to be called the Border Patrol belt. It has a Cobra buckle. Anything with a Cobra buckle is going to be generally a good quality belt. They hold really solid. They have good tension. But this is a, a two and a quarter inch width belt, so it's a nice solid platform for all of your accessories. Uh, this is basically replicating my duty belt. I use it as an alternative duty belt and I use it as a training belt. Now, if you don't like that look, uh, the Safari Land version is this kind of leather looking material and this is my competition setup. And I like to generally keep my competition gear separate that way in case I have it packed for a match or anything like that, I kind of have duty and training gear separate. But you can certainly use the same, no problem. And uh, you also uh, have matching you know, plates here, which I'll get into here in a second. 
but this also has the Velcro lining that matches. So no matter which belt I grab, my trouser belt will stick to either one. But a good rigid belt offers you that platform to support that weight, to offer different mounting solutions, carry all your stuff wherever you may want it. So a good solid belt. Safariland makes some good ones. Uh, Bianchi is its sister company. Keep in mind if you go from different brands, they may have different linings, so that's something to consider. High Speed Gear makes some really good padded belts. There's several other brands out there as well, but th this is just what I use because I find that it works well for me. So as far as what you carry on the belt, well, the first thing is the holster. So I generally carry duty type holsters or in the competition case, I carry a Kydex holster like this. And what I have on all of my belts is this Safari Land quick release system. So this, this plate here matches this fork that is found on the back of the holster. And what's nice is, let's say I grabbed the wrong belt, I can just pop this holster off. I can snap that in place and what it allows is for the holster to be a little bit more offset away from the belt in case I'm wearing a jacket or something like that. And then obviously I can just snap it off, put any particular holster. So a standard duty holster, maybe I'm running a red dot, I can you know use that. You know, maybe I'm running a different holster altogether. All of my holsters, you know, I put these these forks on and it works out really well. So that is a little bit about the belt and the holster. Now, as far as what else to carry on your belt, uh, I carry a restraint. I work in law enforcement, it's a common tool for me. Uh, another thing that I really liked about the Bianchi belt is it came with this little loop here and you can put carabiners and all sorts of other stuff. But when I teach, I like to put my shot timer here so that way it's a nice handy spot for it. I always have it, so I like that. Also, all of my firearms training belts have this little plastic loop right here. I have it on my competition one as well. And that is so I can secure my ear pro. And basically you just take the loop of your ear pro, hook it in, and it hangs like so, so you always know where your ears are, which is handy, versus having to you know fumble around and look for them. So I always like to have my ear pro on me. Now other things, mag pouches, AR pouches. As far as attaching, I really like the Blade Tech tech lock and it opens up it has these little spacers here so if I was running a thinner belt I can put a little plastic piece in this case the wide belt doesn't need any spacers but I simply you know put it in the position shown close that up and then it just locks and clicks into place there and this little latch goes there to prevent everything from opening up now I can put the pouch exactly where I want it and pretty much all my pouches have that. So I have pistol, I have rifle, and I can move them back and forth between belts. And my competition setup, I have these STI pouches, again, also with tech locks on the back. Uh, AR pouches go back and forth. If I need a dump pouch, I have a little blue force gear dump pouch here that pulls out, and it's a uh, nice little dump pouch for empty mags, range supplies, whatever, and then I just put a little tech lock on the back of that. So again, I can just put that right on my belt. If I decide the class or drills that I'm gonna be doing, I need a dump pouch, have that handy. One of the other things that I always carry with me when I'm doing firearms training and even at some matches is a medical pouch. Um, some people call it a blowout kit, IFAC, individual first aid kit, trauma kit, whatever. This pouch is made by High Speed Gear and what I really like about the pouch is it's not huge in size but I can carry all sorts of trauma dressings and emergency supplies. I have a tourniquet attached to the side. It has a spot here for a trauma shears. Uh, I'm a big fan of trauma shears in my line of work. I use them quite regularly for cutting all sorts of things. And then also on the back, because it had molly, I just attached a tech lock again, and that allows me to quickly take the med pouch on and off and I generally wear it you know, kind of behind my gun. Now, why would I want to take it off? Well, when I put this in my range bag, it makes everything a lot more compact and I have a, a compartment just for the med pouch. Sometimes I might be somewhere where I just want to grab the med pouch and not my, my, uh, my whole belt, but it, it makes for a nice system. One last thing to talk about is keepers. And uh, these keepers are basically just a small piece of material with two snaps and they just snap and make a loop. And basically what you'll do with the keeper is you'll have your trouser belt 
and your outer belt, and we'll just pretend that there was a trouser belt in here. So then you would tuck this keeper in your trouser belt and it comes around and it snaps, locking the trouser belt and the outer belt together. Now the Velcro, you might be asking, well, isn't that the Velcro's job? Well, yes, the Velcro does do that, but this just helps anchor the two together. Plus you can keep it in a position to keep things from rotating or to keep a med pouch from moving forward. So I can have this keeper behind my gun. It keeps that gun anchored on my hip, put my med pouch behind it. And this keeps the med pouch from rotating forward to interfere with the draw. So a keeper can anchor gear together. It can keep gear from rotating and it just helps solidify things. With some of the Velcro style belts like this, I've seen Velcro come loose and a keeper can kind of help keep everything together just kind of locking things down. So these are really cheap. You can get a pack of these for like 10 bucks, a pack of four. And then when I'm not using them, I just snap them together so I don't lose them. But I always have some keepers in my range bag. They, they're just one of those things that I find really, really beneficial. So as far as what I carry, that, that's what I carry. Gun, extra mags, restraint, light gear, medic pouch, dump pouch, whatever. If there's something else that you carry, please sound off. Leave a comment in the section below. If you have a video online or photos or whatever, you can share those on our social media. We'd love to see your belt setups and you know we can all here learn together. That's what the great thing about social media and the internet is. But I hope you found this video helpful. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And of course, if you wanna see your question answered on the show, whether it's our QA at the end of the month or maybe we do a dedicated show to it, the only way I will know about that is if you send me a question. So please send me an email to the address shown below. That's the QA at gunsandtactics.com. We'll review as many questions as we can, get them on the show, and go from there. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, Check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.